today on an all-new Dr. Phil. She thinks she's in love. You say it's the love story of the century. Yet is this romance. But you've never physically met. All in her head. You may live in fantasy land, but I do not. Bailey is completely delusional. Jasmine talks to me by moving things in my apartment. She can actually move hangers. I'm not cool. But who is trying to keep them apart? Y'all brought someone here that I explicitly said not to bring. Would you like to leave? Because nobody tells me who to put on my show, including you. I would never think that I could tell you what to do. I didn't know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I can give you a handkerchief for crying, but there aren't any tears. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today is going to be a changing day in your life. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. It seems like everyone is constantly looking down at their phone, scrolling, following, tweeting, and friending to the point where people have no idea what it's like to live in a world without social media. Well, 21-year-old Bailey says she could never be without her phone because she met someone special through Twitter. Eight months ago, she liked a tweet from Jasmine, and from there, they fell in love. Bailey says their romance is like no other love story you have ever heard, and she cannot wait to share it with the world today. Mm. Take a look. My whole life changed the day I met Jazz because she's the most spectacular woman I've ever met, and uh, she makes me so happy. Even though I've never met her in person, she's with me in really weird subliminal universe ways. I talk to her in my head, and that's weird. You don't just want to be like, I see stuff move in my apartment. But, um, I do. Jasmine talks to me by moving things in my apartment in a sense that she's not talking to me. She's letting me know she's there. She's moving the water in my water bottle right now. I know that's gonna sound crazy, but the water is physically fluttering in this cup. She's everywhere. There's not a place in my apartment that Jasmine's not. There's not a place when I walk outside that Jasmine's not. She can actually move hangers. And if you pay attention, she's moving this one. Like, this is my girl. Isn't that cool? She didn't start doing all the crazy stuff until I believed. And so as I started to believe, things started to appear differently to me. And I started to develop a relationship with her in my head to where I would hear her say things to me. And then I'd feel crazy because I'd be like, no, this is not real, this is not true. Who talks to people in their head? <laughs> she just told me she wants me to wear a dress. I don't have a dress. <laughs> You're so funny. I don't have one. She's kind of ridiculous, but that's jazz. In a sense, I've been in a relationship with myself for eight months, but I know it's jazz inside me, and um, it's a real relationship. So, who is Jasmine, and how did she become Bailey's, what I call, obsession? Well, Jasmine is a total stranger, has no idea who Bailey is, and for eight months, Bailey has bombarded her with thousands of love messages. Now, Jasmine says she can't seem to get rid of this girl. Bailey's mom, Erica, says she's lost her daughter to this fixation with Jasmine. Take a look. Growing up, my daughter Bailey was very smart, very funny, very much my little girl. Bailey actually got a full dance scholarship to a college in Massachusetts. Now I fear that my daughter has become someone I don't know anymore, and it breaks my heart. Bailey is completely delusional about her love life. About eight months ago, Bailey told me she was a lesbian and that she had met someone. I was confused. She'd always had boyfriends, dated boys. I just, I didn't see it. Bailey insisted that the person she was in love with was famous and she couldn't publicly acknowledge the relationship because it would damage her reputation. Bailey would get very upset when Jasmine wouldn't contact her and I actually told her several times to get rid of Jasmine and move on. Then, when Bailey told me that Jasmine was moving things into her apartment, I felt very scared. 
I thought she might be doing drugs, but then the more rational she seemed, the more scared I got because I feared there was something seriously wrong. Bailey creates extensive conversations and scenarios in her head that she's had with Jasmine. It's not real. It's not happening. It's in Bailey's head. Right now, I fear for my daughter's sanity. Well, now Jasmine, who Bailey has never met, is actually the one who wrote into the show. So Bailey didn't write in, her mother didn't write in, Jasmine wrote in. She is very concerned about Bailey's obsession with her, so here's what she told us. I'm being cyberstalked by a girl I never even met. Bailey calls me her mother and even her God. Jasmine knows what I feel and what I need. She thinks we speak to each other through our minds. I talk to her all the time. I'm talking to her in my head right now. She's even traveled across state lines to come and try to meet me. My relationship with Jazz started through Twitter, and I just thought she was the sexiest person I have ever seen in my whole life. The first message that I received on Twitter from Bailey was about eight months ago. She said that she was in a relationship with another person pretending to be me. I told Bailey that I wasn't who she thought I was, but she insisted that she knew me. Jasmine speaks to me in pictures, emojis, and her posts on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'm not talking to her through her walls, her brain, or my Instagram posts. She had responded to my tweets. She didn't use my name, but it's very clear things of like, hey, that's about me. I know that. Like, that's my shirt you're talking about, you know? She sends me hundreds of bizarre messages day and night. We share music, we share art, we share tweets. Every single thing in our life we share. I mean, we are so close, it's like gross. <laughs> She has different nicknames for me, and she wrote them all over her bathtub wall. And the most disturbing one that I've seen was the one with me, her, her dog, and it equals hell and a heart. I have no idea what that means, but it's very scary. I'm afraid one day she's gonna hurt me or herself. Hi. Bailey, how are you? Um, not good. Yeah, why is that? I was told that y'all brought someone here that I explicitly said not to bring. Yeah, who's that? Um, my biological mother. Would you like to leave? Um. Because you can certainly leave, because nobody tells me who to put on my show, including you. Okay. So, if you don't. If, if, you, if you think you're entitled enough to tell me who comes on here and who doesn't, somebody has given you a really bad message. Of course, yeah, I know. So, like who to... was it that told you that, that I was agreed to not bring somebody here? Um, um, one of your producers. Okay, who is it? Let's bring him out. Who was it? I believe it was Stephanie. Okay, let's bring Stephanie out, because I'll guarantee you she didn't tell you that I agreed to not bring somebody to this show. You may have told her you didn't want that to happen, but she didn't tell you that was not going to happen. I'll promise you that. All right. So we'll just find this out right now. Okay. Because you may live in fantasy land, but I do not. Stephanie, hello. Hi. Hi. Remember I told you, I just said, I don't know? Yes, I don't know. That's what I said. And I said that Dr. Phil wanted her to be here. Yes, And I just said, I have no idea what's going to go on. Yes, ma'am. That's what I told you. OK, well, that's different than what you just said. I've Stephanie, how long, have, yes, how long have you and I been working together? 16 years, correct? Yes. I just, I believe when we talked on the phone last night and I asked you, if she was coming in, if she was coming on a plane, you said, I can't put her on a plane tonight. There's no flights that come out tonight. Um. But Bailey. Yes. I told you I didn't know. Okay. And that I have no control over that. And I can't control you. have no control over me. That's right. Uh, yeah. I, would, I would never. And what, seriously, what is the rule with the producers here? You don't make deals for me, right? That's right. What do you yeah. tell people when they ask you what I'm going to talk about or not talk about or do or not do? I always say I have no idea. Because you don't. It's up to Dr. Phil, because I don't know. Because I don't know. That's right. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't until I get out of here and, and see what has to be said. But uh, yeah. if... if if the situation was your mother wasn't going to be here, you wouldn't be here. So I, I, I would, ne it isn't even a close call. I would never consider you being here without your mother being here. So that was never even a close call. Now she doesn't know that because we haven't talked about that. I, my producers don't tell me what clinically I'm going to do or not do. I make that decision. So you can pout or be upset or whatever you want to do, but 
that is what it is. And if you don't like that, then you can always go home. Of course, yeah. So tell me, you want to proceed or you want to? Uh, we can we can proceed, yeah. yeah it's up to you. I, I just. I, I really want to talk to you, and I, I really want to talk to you, and I really want to help you, but. Uh, I, I just I don't live in fantasy land. When Jasmine gets on stage, I hope she brings someone with her to marry us on stage. I love Jazz, but I don't even call her Jazz. I call her Mama. I asked her today, can you marry me and can you adopt me? Let me be your kid. I want her for life. And later... She believes that Jasmine got a tattoo for her. And I said, Jasmine says she's never met you, said she's never talked to you. She said, that's her way of keeping me safe because she loves me so much. I want to marry Jasmine, like, right now. Like, right, like, ten minutes ago. When Jasmine gets on stage and we lock eyes, like, I hope she proposes. I hope she even, like, makes it so crazy that she brings someone with her to marry us on stage so that I'm never, ever afraid ever again. I want her for life. Well, other than not liking the lineup and... I would I'd give you a handkerchief for crying, but there aren't any tears. Um, but other than not, want, not liking the lineup, what's your hope today? What is it you would like to do today? I would really like to meet Jasmine. Uh, why? Uh, because I love her, and I believe that there are some very interesting things that happened to me and uh, that I've seen and that she's done and that she said. Why her? I mean, there's 336 million people in America. Minus you, that leaves the other ones. <laughs> why her? Why did you choose her? Why pick her? Why the two of you connect? Um, so I was catfished first. I went into this store and I thought, oh my gosh, this girl is so cute, <laughs> but I'll never ever be able to go back in and tell her. So I pick up the phone and I call her and I'm like, this is my name. Find me. So the girl finds me. Well, they catfish me and I end up finding Jazz's like page, so I have to cheat on Jazz, or cheat on um, the girl, been told I'm not allowed to say her name. Um, no, you don't want to, <laughs> it doesn't matter what her name is. Um, well, it does, because she's, she's very dear to my heart. You're very dear to my heart. The girl that catfished you? Yes, um, and so. Uh, <laughs> she was tricking you, and you, but she's dear to your heart? So You never met her before you went in the store? No, no, no. I had met the girl at the store, uh -huh. and I called. Uh -huh. And then through there, she found me on Facebook, uh -huh. and we met up and we talked. And then we continued to talk, but I didn't realize that it was actually Jazz. Through there, I ended up clicking on Jazz's page because this girl was not treating me right. Uh -huh. um, it's all right. I just feel very... Uh, feel really attacked and y'all all look at me like I'm this person and it's like I'm I'm not, I, I would never have done this I asked her I said are you gonna break my heart and she said no who Jasmine uh. this is so hard to talk about because it's been an eight month long experience and I feel like I'm just being treated like I'm this this ungrateful kid who doesn't work who's in a fantasy world who tells you what to do and how, how did Jasmine tell you she wasn't going to break your heart? I asked her, I said, are you going to make me cry? And she responded and she said, no. By text or? By a message on Instagram. And when was this? This was the day that they called me to be on the show. And I mm -hmm. have the message saved. Uh -huh. You say that you truly think it's the love story of the century? Really? I do, yes. I'm writing a book about it, actually. It's the love story of the century, but you've never physically met. No, sir. And y'all can uh, laugh at me. It's fine. I will be your spectacle. I will be your laughing, laughing spectacle. You can all laugh at me. It's well, fine. you know what? I think we're just going to shut this down because I'm not into all this melodrama and you playing the victim and everything. So you're, you're saying the audience is, is making a spectacle out of you. That's not what I'm about. That's not what I do. I, I, I had you come here to help you. 
spectacle. And you're saying people are ridiculed, making fun of you, you're going to be a spectacle. I, I don't want to be any part of that. I'm, so, I'm, not I'm sorry. So, you know what? Uh, it's, th this has just gone in a really bad direction. I'm going to talk with Jasmine. I'm going to talk with your mother. And I'm just going to let you head on home and go because I'm not going to play. Is there anything I can say to fix this? I'm no, so sorry. No, this, all of this melodrama about ridiculing the audience and they can laugh at you and all of that. I don't play those kind of games. You're very manipulative and I, I just, I'm not interested in all of that. So uh, I'm going to let Bailey uh, move on. And when I come back, I'm going to talk to Jasmine about how to protect herself uh, from this. And we'll talk to Bailey's mom Next, we'll be right back. I apologize that I offended you in any way, shape, or form. That was never my intention. Well, you certainly I... have. So, Christopher, if you'll take Bailey off, it's good to meet you, and I wish you well. Thank you. I'm not doing this. This is absolutely absurd. She's made all this up in her mind. She had the expectation today that she was coming on stage and getting proposed to. Right. And if not, she was going to propose. And later, she's been backstage telling the producers that she was nervous earlier and promises to listen. I'm gonna give her a second chance. I love Jazz, but I don't even call her Jazz. I call her Mama, I call her Mama T. <laughs> she's been my mother my whole life. I don't know how this works and I don't know how she does the things she does, but she didn't start being my mother when she came into my life, March 21st. She didn't. She'd been my mother from the time I was born, September 17th, 1996. She is my mother, not Erica, but Jasmine. Like, I asked her on the plane today, can you marry me and can you adopt me? Like, can we do adoption paperwork? I don't care that people will think it's weird, let me be your kid. Bailey says she met Jasmine eight months ago when she circled like on one of Jasmine's tweets and it was love at first post. Uh, Bailey says she didn't want her mom, Erica, to be part of the show because she says she's just too judgmental of her relationship with Jasmine. But her mom is here and there's no way I would do this without a responsible adult here with this young girl who I think is losing her bearings. So let's take a look at what the mother had to say and then we'll meet her. I found out that Bailey and Jasmine were not in a relationship about five weeks ago. Jasmine contacted me through another family member and I spoke with her on the phone. Jasmine told me that Bailey would not leave her alone and that if we didn't get Bailey to stop contacting her, she was gonna have her arrested. I told Jasmine to cut off all communication with her and to stop responding to her or texting her. And that's when Jasmine told me that she hasn't had any communication with her, that she doesn't call her on the phone, that she doesn't text her. I was shocked. And so I talked to Bailey about it, and she said, oh, she only contacted you because she cares about me. In her mind, Bailey can't separate fantasy and reality when it comes to this relationship with Jasmine. It's good to meet you. You've been watching yes, from the beginning, right? Yes. OK. Uh, what do you think about her conduct since she's been out here? She's been very manic. She's been extremely, extremely happy. Uh -huh. And then very, very sad. And uh -huh. very definite that she didn't want me here. Yeah. What do you think about her behavior since she walked out here and started talking to me? Because I don't, I, this is the first time I've met her. So I've, Correct. you're giving me a baseline on her behavior. Um, I think she had unrealistic expectations of today, and because it wasn't what she wanted to happen, she became very defensive. Mm -hmm. And so she tends to flip between the rational, normal Bailey to the very irrational, very um, expecting more than, than is humanly possible. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I think, and the reason I shut this down, and I'm, I, I may talk to her yet today before we're, we're finished, but it's going to be with hitting the reset button and starting this whole thing over. Right. But um, I think she came out here uh, in a very s snotty, entitled way, 
like, I'm not, I mean, my mother's not supposed to be here. Well, are you kidding me? You don't dictate what I do from a clinical standpoint. There's not one chance in hell that I would talk with her without her responsible parent here. Well, there wasn't a chance in hell I wasn't going to be here. Well, no, of, and of course not. Um, I think that would be irresponsible on my part and yours. You and I are on totally the same wavelength there. I mean, we, you and I need to work together to get this very talented, bright, uh, creative young woman back on the right track. She had the expectation today that she was coming on stage and getting proposed to. Right. And if and not, she was going to propose. Yes. And when I think she got here and Jasmine wasn't on stage, I think she, I think she just put up her defenses and yeah. the fact that she saw that I was here. Yeah, and Dr. Sophie, meet Dr. Sophie right okay. here. Um, you know, he and I, we've been talking long about this. Yesterday we talked about it this morning, that the only way that I was ever going to let Jasmine be on stage with Bailey is if Bailey woke up, came to the realization that she had lost her bearings here and was prepared to apologize to Jasmine for having harassed her, wish her well and go on her way. That would be the only circumstance and situation that I would ever bring a stalker and the stalkee together at the same time. I would not put them together here and just simply, that'd be like throwing gas on a fire to me. Right. And so the chance of them being here together at the same time is a slim chance, and but a chance if, if she was to hear what I had to say and wake up about this. I mean, this is, this is absolutely absurd. She's made all this up in her mind. I think I know why. I think I know how it's come about. I think I know how to unravel it for her. I uh, would love to unravel it for her. I've been yeah. trying. We've, we've seen doctors. It's not like we're just well, shoved her off and let her on her own. And I said, please let me know my child's alive. There was about 14 hours where I didn't know if she was alive or not. You stopped it and got her back. I contacted Jessica and I said, when my child gets there, please let me know. Um, now, one of the reasons Bailey is so upset with her mother is that when she tried to meet Jasmine, her mother very responsibly put a stop to the trip. Take a look. I decided that I needed to go visit Jasmine, so I drive 14 hours and I for four hours in her hometown. Bailey drove from Texas to Georgia with just her dog in the car. On my way to Georgia, I left Jasmine a message on a bench at a national park, and then I also left her a couple of messages in a gas station on the wall. After two days of her being gone, her father and I agreed that he would go get her. When he found her, he said that Bailey had spilled milk in her car, she'd been sleeping with the windows open, and her dog had been sick in the car. Bailey wanted to move to Georgia, and she only had $10 to her name. Bailey refused to come home. My dad and his girlfriend pretended to be nice to me. And when I let my guard down, I am flipped and thrown into a chokehold and restrained. I fought like hell. My bra came unhooked. And he was like, if you don't comply, I'm dropping your dog off on the side of the road. And I had nine one. And I had one more one to get. And he grabbed it. And he was like, you want me to drop her off? And I was like, no, I, I promise I won't do anything. He's like, exactly. When Bailey got home, we were making doctor's appointments for her. We took away the car, and within two days of being home, she tried to leave again. I want to be with Jasmine. I just don't want to have this subliminal love anymore. It is so exhausting. My brain is fried. I need to meet her face to face. So she drove, what, 14 hours? Yes, straight. To get there. And you got her, you stopped it and got her back. And of course, she sends a message to Jasmine and says, I'm here if you want to meet me. Correct. And Jasmine's like, N no, I, I do not. I also contacted Jasmine when she was on the way there. Yeah. And I tried to get Jasmine to prevent, like, when you see Bailey, because at the time I didn't know that Jasmine actually didn't have any contact with her. And I sent her a message through Twitter and I said, please let me know my child's alive, because she turned off her phone. Mm -hmm. So 
There was about 14 hours where I didn't know if she was alive or not because she was driving and she hadn't slept in three days. Right. And um, when she turned off her phone, I couldn't keep track of her. So I contacted Jasmine and I said, when my child gets there, please let me know. And she sent me a very vulgar message and was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And yeah, well, and you have to understand, at the time, at the she time had, you didn't know what she I had been through. I, no, I had no idea. Yeah. And she didn't know that you were actually on her side. Because understand, for a good while, you thought that they were actually in a relationship, that they had met, that they were dating. That Yes, it, when Bailey came home from Georgia, she told me she had met Jasmine. Yeah, because one of the first things that Bailey said is that, first note I have right here, is Bailey was afraid we were going to tell her mother, Erica, that Bailey hasn't met or spoken to Jasmine. And Erica found out through Jasmine in October that they had never met or spoken to each other. And as of today, Bailey still thinks her mom doesn't know the truth. She says her mom will judge her, which tells me two things. One, she knew you were going to be here. Because she's worried some, that we were going to tell you. Some part of her knew I was going to be here. Well, I, yeah. I, she's afraid we were going to tell you when you got here that they really didn't even know each other. And I had a conversation with her after Jasmine contacted me. And I said, Jasmine says she's never met you, said she's never talked to you. She said, that's her way of keeping me safe because she loves me so much. Mm -hmm. She thinks she gets signs from Jasmine. Correct. Who trying to get married? It's getting cold out here. She will take something, whether Jasmine sent it or she sends it, and she will personalize that and think that's something about her. We put together a list of signs that she takes as uh, Jasmine being active in her life. Like uh, on the tape piece, she said that water was moving in her dressing room here, and that was Jasmine doing that. Emojis, uh, long horn and two fingers. She says that's a special message to her. Tweets responding to thoughts. Walls, curtain, clothes, and shovel move. And she says that's Jasmine communicating to her. She had Jasmine tea. So that's from her. Lights in the car pop. A turtle shirt, turtle tattoo on Jasmine, Denzel Washington, homie hopping, lyrics to songs. I mean, she'll find anything and find a way to say that's her communicating. Correct. She believes that Jasmine got a tattoo for her. Yeah. And, of course, a rational question would be if, if she's that connected to her, why doesn't she just talk to her? Why didn't she answer her tweets? Correct. And the irrational side of her doesn't challenge that, doesn't, and her throwaway answer is, well, she's famous, which she isn't, uh, and so she has to hide the relationship, which she doesn't, and you can tweet back and forth privately, which she doesn't. I mean, there are such simple answers to explain away. There's, there's very logical answers, but yeah. Bailey doesn't want to hear them. Yeah, she doesn't want to hear them. Why do you think she's gone down this road? She was attacked at college. And after that attack, she didn't want to be alone. She couldn't deal with the pain that she was going through. Closed captioning provided by Why do you think she's gone down this road? I think she grasped onto her because she couldn't deal with the pain that she was going through. Mm -hmm. There were, um, after I dropped her off at college, she was attacked at college. And um, that was about 12 days after I dropped her off. And after that attack, I saw a very um, different side of Bailey. Mm -hmm. My child, who had always been this huge extrovert, became very apprehensive of men. She became very apprehensive of being 
stuck anywhere. She didn't want to be alone. She wouldn't go get gas at night. She wasn't really participating in college activities. And then she came home in December for Christmas and told me that she didn't want to return to that college. Mm -hmm. It was just too far from home. It was um, too scary. What do you think her problem is with you? Why do you think she's decided that you're not okay? Why I'm evil? Um, well, I tried to soften that a little. It's okay. I'm, I'm a very realistic person, and I'm very blunt and honest, as you just heard. Um, I think she doesn't like because I challenge her on every time she tells me these things. And I'm like, okay, Bailey, this really can't be true. Like, you, this can't be happening. Like, honey, you haven't given me any proof. You haven't given me anything. This is all just... You know, it's, it's just what you're saying. And I don't, I don't see this person, like, I don't see them liking your tweets. I don't see them on your Facebook. I don't see any pictures. I don't see that. Well, and she told me, well, you wouldn't because you wouldn't understand the way we talk to each other. She has sent some messages to Jasmine about you. Um, she says, quote, Erica just screams and makes me feel like I don't deserve to just be me and breathe. She says, quote, she doesn't like my thoughts and words, and that's me. And how do I tell her I hate her for not helping me through this with comfort and love? Uh, quote, a friend told me the night before she came to college, she held her mom and cried and begged her not to go and told her she was scared. And I think to myself, I've never had anything like that. What's your response to that, to those three those are just examples. Um, they kind of absolutely destroys me because I've done everything for my children. My whole life I've set up around my children. Um, I've never not been there when she's needed me. I know I'm not the softest person in the world and I know that I'm a very disciplined person. Like. My life hasn't always been rainbows and lollipops. I'm very sorry that she feels like I'm not a place of comfort and love. Um, kind of kills me. Mm -hmm. I was in the green room watching her on stage and I asked if I could come out here and hug her because it was killing me to see her cry on stage. Mm -hmm. Well, she's been backstage. Uh, telling the producers that she was nervous earlier and moving forward she promises to listen and not be so melodramatic if she comes back out here. And um, I, I'm, I'm gonna give her a second chance. I'm gonna have her come back out here. I'm gonna ask you to stay okay. um, and have her come back out here. And I'm gonna make a suggestion to you. I'm expendable. Dr. Sophie's expendable. I mean, she doesn't have to like me. Right. Um, because I'm not looking for a new best friend. I'm looking to deliver a message and get some reality through to her. So how about just for the next little bit of time, you let the doctors here be the reality messengers and you do what you're talking about. You, you be the mom that wants to comfort her and let us do Absolutely. that part and see where we go. I don't know how this will go, but we're gonna have Bailey rejoin us next. Bailey was attacked. I've been choked, thrown into walls. Less than 12 days after she started college, my daughter and her roommate were trapped in a stairwell by three young men. I was in shell shock. My mom is a fantastic dance teacher. She cares about her students, and she dedicates her life to it. That is her thing. But growing up, I felt like my mom never allowed me to be who I was as a true person. I had to eat the way she wanted. I had to watch my television based off of what she decided. I have lived my whole life never feeling like I was good enough for my mother. 
In the past year, Bailey has had what I think uh, are five or six traumatic events take place. She says her mother, Erica, wasn't really there to help her or console her the way she felt like she needed. Take a look and then we'll talk about it. I've had a lot of bad things happen in my life. Bailey was attacked. I was told that he was yelling at her and that he grabbed her by her hair. He held me down and physically hit me multiple times. I've had doors slammed into my back. I've been choked, thrown into walls, chased. I've had chairs on top of me. Prior to this incident, Bailey had become pregnant. We went to the hospital to do tests and there was no egg. Everything in me wants to keep this child. And then I realized I was miscarrying. When the HCG levels were plateauing, they had to give me a shot that they give cancer patients. I literally had to watch my baby die. Bailey felt horribly guilty, even though she never had a viable pregnancy. Bailey also told me that she had been assaulted sexually by a male friend. She said she just didn't tell him no enough. Then, less than 12 days after she started college, my daughter and her roommate were trapped in a stairwell by three young men. One man physically blocked my way and started caressing my face, and his hand was moving lower. My roommate at the time smacked him with her backpack, and so I was able to push through. But I was stunned. I was in shell shock. Because of these assaults, she no longer could work and she stopped being able to live in her apartment with her roommate, and she stopped dancing. Eventually, Bailey left that college for good. I really isolated myself. Luckily, I was able to bring myself back in a half sense, and then I found jazz, and I realized that there are two halves of a whole, and I have never felt more whole or more loved in my entire life. Okay, well, Bailey has been backstage, and she says she wants to come back out and continue our conversation or restart our conversation. So we'll ask Bailey to rejoin us now. Closed captioning provided by... I have so much more to talk about with Bailey. She was backstage listening to my conversation with her mother and during that time, I hear Bailey was getting really frustrated and antsy wanting to come back and talk to me. Well, I'm going to give her that opportunity and join her mother. And this time she says no more melodrama. I'm glad she's wanted to stick around. She says she has something to tell me and is ready to get real so we can figure out why she is so obsessed with this stranger from social media who she has never even met. You won't want to miss that tomorrow. I want to thank all of my guests today. If you or someone you know are dealing with an issue you'd like to speak to me about, log on to drphil.com, tell me your story. You can also find me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Thanks a lot. We'll see you tomorrow.